Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I am And when I am alone, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus, and when I come to and when I come to die, oh, and when I come to die, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Amen and amen, and what a message we have this morning, just a message in a song, give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And that is the message for this day. That is the message for our lives in my experience, that this world is not our home, that we're just a passing through. That is the good news. We have a responsibility while we are here to make a difference. But let us not plant our feet here. Let us choose Jesus and let us realize that God cares for us no matter what are the circumstances, that God can give us the victory over every difficulty and circumstance in life. I'm Pastor Kanan Harris, and this is my son, Ezekiel, and we're broadcasting from Denver, Colorado, and so great to see you all today here in Denver and even across the miles. Just know that we pray for you and uh, reach out to us this week and see if we might offer you up a word of prayer. Tell us what you need and uh, we'll be in touch with you. But we're gonna get started today. We've got a great message for you today, and we're gonna get started by having a word of prayer. So uh, do know that we pray for you, and uh, let us know what we can pray uh, about. So uh, let's go to God in prayer as we begin this time of worship. And God, we are so blessed, and God, we just call on your name, and we trust in you, knowing that this world is not our home, but knowing, God, that we do have a, a responsibility while we are here to share the message of your love, to share a word of hope and encouragement with one another, and in fact, to share the word that is Jesus Christ and the guidebook, the Bible that you've given us for our lives. God, help us to find the strength by your Holy Spirit to get where you want us to go. God, help us not to carry the weight by ourselves, but to trust in you, to cast all our cares on you, and to know that you will carry that weight for us, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. God, we are so blessed and help us to be a thankful people and help us to uh, give you thanks in all that we do. God, trusting in you that you will uh, help us to get to the place that we need to go. God, in this time where we see so much violence and so much division in the world, we do pray for your peace, God, and we turn it all over to you. God, help us not to be angry, but help us to turn these things over to you, knowing that you can be responsible, knowing that you can take all these matters into your hands, God, that we don't have to fight and that we don't have to worry. God, we are so blessed and we trust in you and we cast all our cares on you and we do pray for your healing in this land and around the world, God, for we know you are the God of miracles. And we pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus, and by the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen and amen. And we do pray for you. 
And as I said, we have a lesson today which is edifying from the book of Romans. So Ezekiel, read this lesson for us from Romans chapter 12. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Love and never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the Word of God, the Gospel from Paul's letter to the Romans. Thanks be to God this day and always. Where the Scripture says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For as the Scripture says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And what a principle, as people of peace, as peacemakers, as Christians, we have this as a core principle of our lives, to never avenge ourselves, to never take matters of justice into our own hands, but to turn these questions over to God, because God says this is a spiritual principle. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so what does this mean? This means that we are not to get angry. This means that if we have a conflict with a brother or sister, that it is our responsibility always as Christians to take the high road. And this is very difficult. We can stumble and fall, but we've got to get back up again, and we have to trust in God that God will give us the victory. And in fact, that our God is a God of justice, and that justice will prevail. Perhaps not even in this life, but justice will prevail. We will all stand before the judgment seat of God. This is the spiritual principle that we have in our Bible, and especially in this verse that says, Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but trust in the Lord. For the Lord says, the principle is, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That means that all these questions, we turn these questions over to God. That means we forgive others as we would be forgiven. The men's Bible study on Saturday is studying this passage we just studied on uh, Saturday, the Lord's Prayer, where the scripture says, and what a hard verse, but it says, God, it invites God to forgive us as we forgive others. So what this means is that we are not to be angry at our brother or sister, but that we are offer them the grace and the forgiveness that God first offered us, because we are the recipients of grace. Let's not get up on a judgment seat and uh, look down our nose at another person. Let's realize that we have received grace, and so then we need to extend that grace to others. Jesus tells a parable about a man who was a recipient of great grace. The, the king or the, the master granted him forgiveness of a huge debt, and then he went out into the street, and he corralled somebody who owed him a smaller debt. And he made him pay that debt and threatened him and the man who forgave him the large debt found about it, out about it and said, how can you screw this man to the wall when I forgave you so much of a larger debt? We have a responsibility to realize that we are the first, the recipients of grace. And so we need to extend grace to our brothers and sisters and friends in Jesus Christ. And then that means that we don't get into that position of being angry. We see this so much out there in the world. We see people lining up on one side or the other of the divide in this world based on people's opinions, based on their politics. Somebody is heard and others get angry and seek justice, whether this is gang-related or, or mob-related or um, politically motivated. But we see this back and forth, back and forth. One is killed, another is killed. It just develops rancor and anger and violence on the other side. This builds up to a great conflagration. God is giving us a principle. Don't take justice into your hands. Turn this over to God. Cease fighting. Only then will we be able to heal the divisions that we're experiencing right now in this great land. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Beloved, do not avenge yourself. Turn these questions over to God. This is a spiritual principle. As they say in the program of recovery, we have ceased fighting anything and anyone. We have ceased fighting. Why? Because we've turned these questions over to God. Let's let God fight our battles for us. And most importantly, let us not be angry. Because when we get angry, then we are not effective. 
So let's realize we serve a righteous God, a righteous judge. Let's let God take vengeance. Let's let God avenge the wrongdoing. And let's not do this ourselves. Let's not take up our arms against our brothers and sisters. And let's not harbor hatred and revenge in our hearts. Let's be people of peace. Let's turn these questions over to God. Let's trust that God is in control, that God is the righteous judge, that we will all stand before the Lord one day and God will open the books of life. And there we can pray that we will find ourselves. But there is a principle here because if we take vengeance into our hands, then we are changing God's economy. Then we are taking that right of vengeance away from God. And perhaps we may be reversing the situation in God's sight. We do not want to incur that debt. We do not want to put ourselves in that position. We want to turn all questions of revenge, all questions of justice, turn these things over to God. Let us not take these upon ourselves and then trust in the Lord that God will make a way somehow. Do you believe that? For that is the good news of this passage of scripture today and what a word for this world that we're living in. Let's pray for all of the violence and division and unrest that we see in the news in this very, very difficult season in the life of this world and um, in, particularly in this country right now. And let's turn all these questions over to God and above all, let's not get angry. But let's trust that God says we do not take these matters, but we, we turn them over to God. Let's let God be in control because God is in control. That is the good news for today. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. And amen. And uh, we're going to sing another of these spiritual songs this morning as we close out our service of worship today. And uh, we're singing these out of the spiritual tradition today. And they do have a lot of meaning uh, for such a time is this and we do need a wo good word from the lord for such a time as this so so glad that you could join us and do join us again at 10 when we have our communion service this morning where we all just share our communion elements together but let's sing this song as we leave out it's called people get ready people get ready there's a train a coming you don't need no baggage you just get on board all you need is faith Thank you for tuning in this morning. Again, remember, we do have a 10 a.m. service. And interesting, the sun just rose here in Denver, Colorado, again at 6.30. We cycled back around to when we first started this service on Easter. So um, uh, who knows? We'll likely do this again outside next week, maybe for a few weeks. But uh, 6.30 will become dark soon enough, so we may move this service inside. But again, great to see you. hope you join us at uh, 10 a.m for our communion service this day and know we pray for you and let's go out on the benediction. And now may the love of God, the peace of Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all through Jesus Christ our Lord this day and always, amen.